the story called Ocean Animal Adaptations by Julie Murphy. But before we read, let's sing our song. Everyone get out their glasses. These are my glasses and this is my book. I put on my glasses and open up my book and I read, read, read and I look, look, look. I put down my glasses and whoop, close up my book. Okay. The title is Ocean Animal Adaptations and the author is Julie Murphy. The author is the person that writes the words of a story. Do any of you remember what part of the book this is? You're right, that's the front cover. What about this part of the book? That's the back cover. All right, here's the tricky one. How about this part of the book? What is this part of the book called? A spine, that's right, that's the book's spine. I wonder if this story is a fiction story or a non-fiction story. When I open up my story, the first page is the table of contents. And here, the table of contents tells us what's going to be talked about during the story. And it tells us what page those topics are. So the first topic is called about ocean animals. And that you can find on page four. Then the next part is body parts. You can find that on page six. The next part is body coverings. That you can find on page 16. And the last part or the last topic is called behavior and that's on page 24. And look boys and girls, I see other nonfiction text features. I see that there's a glossary on page 30 and an index on page 32. That's interesting. That tells us that that's a nonfiction book because it has a table of contents, it has a glossary, and it has an index. At the top, in black outlined letters, it says about ocean animals. That is a heading, and that heading tells us what the page is going to be about. So here we go. Oceans are big, wet, and salty. They can be deep or shallow, cold or warm. Near the surface, they have lots of light, but deep down, they are darker than night. Ocean animals have special ways of moving, hiding, and catching food. We call these ways adaptations. Look, boys and girls, I see another nonfiction text features. Are these real pictures or are they drawings? They are real pictures, and you can always find lots of real pictures in nonfiction books. Okay, the next page is page six, and the heading is body parts. So we're going to learn about how body parts change when animals live in the ocean. The shark is a perfect ocean predator. Its bullet-shaped body slices through water, and its powerful tail makes the shark fast. Chomp! Two or three rows of sharp teeth stop the shark's prey from escaping. Penguins dive and dart under the water. They catch speedy fish and krill to eat. Their stumpy wings cannot fly, but they make fantastic flippers. Look, here's a picture of a penguin diving. So in nonfiction books and even in fiction books, the words need to match the pictures. So remember when we learned about Laura Numeroff, we learned that she had to work with an illustrator to make sure that her pictures and her words match. An anglerfish doesn't chase its prey. It wiggles a pole-shaped spine. Other fish think it's food. And when they come near, gulp, the anglerfish snatches its meal. This is a fish that lives deep in the ocean. Lying flat on the seafloor, this fish matches the sand. A flounder's two eyes are on top side to watch for danger. So instead of having an eye on each side of its body, this flounder's two eyes are on the top. Sea stars have one eye on each arm, but they still have trouble spotting predators it's a good thing sea stars taste terrible. 
Anemones move very slowly, but they can catch quick fish with their stinging tentacles. Zap! A fish is stung, pulled to the anemone's mouth, and eaten. The stringy tentacles of sea nettles also sting prey. How do nettles blob, blob, blob through the water? They squeeze and they relax the muscles in their bell-shaped bodies. Did you know that jellyfish don't have spines? Body coverings is the next heading of this story. A gentle leafy sea dragon hides from predators by sitting in seaweed. Leafy bits on its body sway just like its weedy home. A decorator crab uses a disguise to hide. It sticks sponges, seaweed, and even small snails to its body. Imagine changing your looks to suit every place you go. An octopus always blends in with its ocean surroundings. Darker light, bumpy or smooth, an octopus has a disguise to match. Predators can't catch what they can't see. This brightly colored sea slug doesn't mind being seen. Predators know that the bright colors warn of bad taste. Glass squid are also hard to spot. Other animals look right through their soft, clear bodies. All predators see is the sea. A sea turtle's tough shell protects it from predators. On land, the sea turtle moves slowly. In the ocean, its shell feels lighter. Turtles are strong swimmers. Okay, the next heading is called behavior. It's titled behavior. Sounds travel far underwater. That's why hungry dolphins don't look for food. They listen for it. Hunting dolphins make clicking noises. The clicks hit nearby fish and bounce back. From the echo, the dolphin knows where to hunt. It's dinner time. A father seahorse holds his mate's eggs inside a special pouch. In his pouch, the eggs are safe. The tiny baby seahorses hatch and swim away. Goodbye, Dad. Oh, look, here's the glossary. The blue words are vocabulary words and the black words tell us what those vocabulary words mean. So the first word is adaptation. An adaptation is a change a living thing goes through to better fit with its environment. So that's the glossary, boys and girls. And when we go all the way to the end, this is the index and these have vocabulary words and what pages we can find those words on. So if we were looking to learn about sea dragons, we would go to page 16. If we were looking to learn about sea stars, we would go to page 11. All right. So that's the end of this story, Ocean Animal Adaptations by Julie Murphy. It was so fun reading this nonfiction book with you. I can't wait to read with you again. Bye.